this, we already said, right? like a cricket ball hitting the bat, the light, the photons of light, when they hit an object, they are reflected. Of course, when the same cricket ball is actually used on a rough pitch, like let's say that I'm playing in a gully cricket in a very uh, ground which is covered with pebbles, it has a lot of stones, so it's very rough, it's very irregular. Now, if I put the ball, sometimes it will go there, sometimes it will go here, which is very good for the bowler, of course. For the batsman, you have to keep running here and there and trying to hit the ball. Very, very difficult, sometimes it will go here again, go there. The same thing happens with most of the objects. When photons, which are very, very small, tiny balls, like that we have assumed so far, when they hit the rough surface, Right? So, for example, this is a surface which is very rough. Now, these photons of light, we draw them as rays. Okay, so these rays are not are just streams of photons. When they hit such an irregular surface, the surface is not regular. It is not flat, not flat like this bat. Okay, think about it like that. They are reflected at various angles. So, for example, the photon which is hit here would probably go here. The photon which is hit here might actually go here. Who knows? The photon which hits at other places, right, might all go in different different directions. So, photons. So when when they are coming, the, the the rays of light, when they are coming in, they are very regular. They are all, let's say, parallel to each other. The photons are coming very regular, very nice. But when they hit this rough surface, they are all reflected back in different directions, randomly, more or less. This is known as irregular or diffuse reflection. This is what we see in most of the objects around us. They are not regularly uh, reflected. That is why the light from such diffuse reflection is able to travel all around and it, it illuminates the rest of the room also in that process. The other kind of reflection actually is from a smooth surface, very smooth surface, like for example the water in this lake or a smooth surface of the mirror that you see every day, it is very smooth, very very flat surface. When the light hits such a smooth surface, what happens is, see these rays of light, these streams of photons which are coming in, they are all parallel, see, and because the surface is so smooth, so nice, they all leave in a very regular fashion. So they leave out also in a very regular or parallel way. And this is known as regular or specular reflection. See, with, when I change, in this case, if I change the angle of this mirror, sorry, if I change the angle of this mirror, right, so this is how it was go on, going, if I change the angle of this mirror, I am able to change the, predictably change the direction of the reflected light also. So this is the kind of reflection that is used, the smooth or specular reflection is what is used in the mirror, in, in the mirror where you are able to see a reflection of yourself, almost perfect, almost like yourself. Now one of the things to understand about reflection is that it is symmetric. What does that really mean? It means that if Mr. Eggy, right, who is sitting, who is on, standing on this side of the mirror, is able to see Mr. P, who is standing on the other side of the mirror, so he is able to see Mr. P in the mirror, then Mr. P would also be able to see Mr. Eggy in the mirror. That is what symmetric really means. One of the other things, right, if we take Mr. Eggy and Mr. P and leave them in the space where there is no air, there is perfect, there is, there is vacuum, okay, and we take all of this contraption with us to the space. Now we have looked at one of the important interactions, that the important ways in which the light interacts with objects. We told, we already said that one of those ways is reflection. So reflections happen when the light hits the objects and it is sent back. There are other ways in which the light can interact with objects. The two other ways are absorption and transmission. Absorption is simple. Light hits an object, the photons are hitting an object. Those form of those photons never are actually absorbed by the object itself and are not able to go out. So the, the object it soaks their energy and it keeps those, those photons sort of die down and they don't go out. So that is known as absorption. So that is very simple. The third kind of interaction which can possibly happen is that the object, it allows the light to pass. So there is a thin sheet of glass that, it, that I have here. The light comes in and the glass, not the mirror, okay, the glass allows the light to just pass through. These kinds of objects which allow the light to pass through are known as transparent. So the tra glass is transparent. I can see through it because it allows the light to pass through. So here are some examples. These are simple, you can understand it very simply. So these are rays of light, these are photons coming in. This is simple reflection, perfect, nice regular reflection. This is irregular reflection. This is transmission. So light is coming from here and this slab of glass is just allowing it to pass through. This is also a case of transmission, but this is diffused or scattered transmission. So this, in this case of transmission, although the light which is coming in, right, both this and this, is coming in straight, while it's going out, it is scattered or diffused in all directions. So transmission is happening, but it is diffused or scattered transmission. So if a person 
is actually standing here. So let's say that this is the eye, okay, I'm not a very good, I don't draw very good drawings, but let's say this is the eye of a person. If he's seeing these lights coming coming out, he would not be able to clearly make out what is what the object was here, right? Some objects allow both. They allow part of the light to be reflected back and part of the light to be transmitted. So all of those combinations can happen. 